of all, I would like to thank Stephen Charlie for inviting me to this lecture. Um, today, I would like to focus on uh, the, perception, the Chinese perception of uh, China, how China uh, perceives of itself and perceives of itself as few things and its relation with the, with the West, with the, uh, with the world. The importance of Confucian heritage, as already discussed by Sean, and uh, who has already explained what are the tenets of Confucianism. I shall provide a historical excursus of what happened in the last few decades. My conclusion is that the Chinese have a quite coherent attitude toward the West in the course of history. And now they feel strong enough to suggest a new model of modernity to the world, as you said, just said. I want to show you a few pictures which demonstrate the great transformations China is undergoing in the last year. So you can see the great difference between the first two pictures and these ones. Towards the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th century, the perception of the, uh, that the Chinese had of, of themselves and of their own culture changed. China is going through a period of and internal stability, characterized by increasing population and economic growth. It was a period in which art and literature flourished, and Confucian culture experienced a great spread. China was about to become the great dragon, surrounded by evolving satellite nations, the little dragon. But the Western pride was getting more and more urgent with the beginning of the colonial age. The open wars against Great Britain ended with a British victory and led China to open frontiers to Western culture. As a consequence, when Chinese intellectuals came to discover the new culture, Confucianism appeared in their eyes as absolute, obsolete and conservative. So, in the first decade of the, of the uh, 20th century, a new quest for compromise was looked for. Chinese tradition versus Western science and technology seemed the more appropriate formula. And so the Chinese intellectuals uh, call it this formula, Chinese culture as basis, Western culture as practice. Actually, they uh, adopted this formula from the uh, main dynasty in New Confucianism. The Chinese intellectuals were aware of the limits of their knowledge, of, and so they proposed a compromise solution, keeping Confucianism as foundational system of Chinese culture and adopting a receptive attitude towards Western science and technology. Considered applications of the culture toward which at the beginning they didn't show any interest. In other words, they suggested to conjugate <coughs> Confucian tradition with Western technology. And they expressed uh, this concept in this formula, Yu Ki Si Yu. In May the 4th, 1919, we have the May 4th movement, and one of the slogans at that time was Tata Punti Again demolish the Confucian shock. As we know, in the past, Confucianism has been adopted as state ideology by many Chinese dynasties. But now, with the light of the new political and social situation, this was not possible anymore. In those years, Confucian culture was considered the main cause of the cultural, political, and economic backwardness of the country. So, a new epoch of Chinese culture starts with a critical approach and the study of classical culture and the denial of the Confucian tradition cause, which caused the reaction of a few conservative personalities. So, the events of the 19th century and the first decade of the 20th century had thrown China into a deep crisis. On the other hand, they had stimulated a lively debate that led to interesting attempts of compromise with Western culture. 
In order to face the foreign cultural dominance, intellectuals promoted reforms, works of, of syncretism, and new interpretation of the classics. In 1931, a famous intellectual, Yang Shuni, a professor of philosophy at Beijing University, published a book entitled Eastern and Western Cultures and Their Philosophy, in which he expressed his opinion on the realities of different civilizations. The Western man pursues his own inclination. The Indian is inclined toward the negation of the soul and of his desires, while only the Chinese culture as a well balanced basis. Yang appreciated Western culture. However, he believed that the only Chinese culture with appropriate change could become a global culture. In the 50s, we witnessed the diaspora of Confucian intellectuals. In 1955, Mao, Mao Zedong had launched the first campaign against intellectuals associated with interference. But actually, he needed their support. Therefore, he granted them autonomy and freedom of speech, launching the so called Hundred Flowers campaign. However, the supporters of Chinese culture and Confucianism were considered reactionaries, and as such, they were controlled and they were used to, de 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 to orientate their studies differently. At that time, Confucianism was considered a lingering poison of feudalism. Content assumed more heated tones during the Cultural Revolution, started in 1966 and ended with Mao's death in 1976. He who would have possessed Confucianism would, would have endangered his own life. So what happened that you, uh, many intellectuals, Confucian intellectuals, went to Hong Kong in the 50s. Their focus was giving life to a new education system based on Confucianism, but open to a dialogue with the West. Among them, the famous scholars Che Wu, Tan Jumi, who founded in Hong Kong the New Asia College with the purpose of giving life to a new educational system based on Confucianism. The New Asia College in Hong Kong became the medical center for Confucian studies. So the experience of the Asia College gave life to a uh, a trend called contemporary new Confucian studies or new Confucianism. Its most uh, famous representatives were Xiong Shuli, Yang Shuli, and the famous intellectual Feng Yuan, Kuni, Chemo, etc. When this cultural movement was born, intellectuals living in Hong Kong and Taiwan started already in the 1870s to define the phases of the historical development of new Confucianism. But in the People's Republic of China, it was only a decade later that people started to acquire consciousness of this trend of thought and to blame its paternity. So this happened in 1986, around 1986. 